Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Moses Kodana Institute um, lectures on writing. Today, we are talking about the new normal in the broadcasting sector. Um, it is brought to us uh, by the very best, uh, Mr. Alex Mtiani, uh, the longest serving personality on Ikakasi FM. Uh, as a founding presenter, he has uh, driven the station's breakfast show, uh, Alex and the crew from 2006. Uh, he also leads the station's news and current affairs um, team and anchors the station's flagship uh, program uh, in Daba. Uh, at present, he is the station's manager and a public uh, liaison officer. Um, thank you very much for having um, taken the time to give us this lecture, Mr. Mtiane. Uh, over to you. Yes, good afternoon, Miss July. Um, I'm sure you can hear me now. Yes, yes, I can. Please go through. All right, thank you very much. All right, um, firstly, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to share my insight, uh, my observation and experience again in the sector that I've been in, as uh, as aptly um, uh, mentioned by Miss July in the intro. Just a slight correction there. I'm currently uh, serving as a news manager, not the station manager. So my focus really is in the um, gathering of news, the packaging, compilation, as well as dissemination of uh, the news bulletins. So what I will do then, I will take you through the three stages of the topic that we are uh, on about. Firstly, I would like to look at the long term effects of COVID-19 in the industry. And then again, we're going to go into the new normal, look at the challenges and how broadcasters locally and uh, internationally are coping or mitigating against this as a challenge. And then my last uh, point would be looking at post pandemic uh, future of the broadcasting industry. Now, as evident in what is currently going on, um, 
we are seeing unprecedented challenges facing the industry. Now broadcasters are forced to reinvent themselves. So there's not going to be a, 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 a template that uh, each broadcaster is going to adopt, but we are already seeing that much as a, a, a broadcasting um, players are competing against each other, but there seems to be, from my own observation, uh, a, 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 a same practices um, across the board. And again, the issue of revenue is one challenge that is becoming a problem. Revenue is down, the budget are slashed, and again, the issue of laying off of staff as well. That's one of uh, the biggest challenges that is facing the industry that uh, we see broadcasters and uh, media companies uh, uh, cutting down on the number of staff. In this country alone, we've seen at least, uh, what, five media groups. Uh, some of them, especially in the print industry, we already saw dwindling numbers in print and uh, magazines are off the shelf. So they are really, really being pushed off the cliff. Another challenge is also um, a straddling between safety of staff and profits. Um, we are seeing that happening in some of the major players in our industry, where now they have to make sure that they adhere and comply with the, 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 the safety protocol uh, over the drive for profits. You do know how strenuous uh, it can be for any organization once uh, there have been um, staff members who have tested positive. According to the regulations, uh, there is a, a protocol that uh, must not be compromised. So that uh, does have a huge negative impact on the broadcasting sector because uh, immediately when that happens, that means you're not going to have live content and uh, it means for up to 14 days, you must have a plan as to how you're going to uh, go about doing that. And again, another um, uh, challenge that is faced by the industry is how this COVID-19 um, is impacting on content creation. With the safety protocols, as mentioned, affecting collaborative production, it means that uh, for all the creative uh, ideas and the plans uh, which include innovation, they are going to be um, they, they, they are going to be um, affected in the sense that from uh, the traditional ways of uh, generating revenue, now we are seeing that with the advent of uh, the digital platforms, uh, social media as well, and podcast uh, being uh, one of the most sought after options for alternative content. With this, uh, you will find that the fewer the people that will be allowed to be um, at work, the chances are that uh, they will not have enough people to actually make sure that traditional packaging extends to, 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 to digital uh, platforms. Of course, uh, advertising is dwindling. That is going to also have a knock-on effect on commercial on e uh, commercial uh, innovation. And let's look at uh, the impact on broadcast journalism. Uh, for years, whether there was a war, there was conflict, and uh, there was a, 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 a matter that impacted um, on the continent or individual countries, people have always relied on broadcast journalism, particularly radio, because one, it's one medium that does not require much. You have one journalist who will go out on the field to cover the story. That's all the human capital you need. And again, uh, being in, in, in Africa, again, uh, where the issue of power supply is not reliable, even before load shedding. So it means uh, accessing radio, you do not have to pay and you do not have to subscribe. So now it really means that uh, the, the, the dependence of audiences on radio might be impacted because people will run to their favorite radio station or um, 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 as credible uh, news source only to find that they do not get what they expect. Now we've seen that there is a gap in journalism, training about medical reporting. Remember, when you get information about the latest vaccine or the, the, the discussion around the, the, the issue of COVID-19, remember this is a, a new pandemic that even people in the medical field are still uh, trying to, 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 to find ways to curb it. They will use the medical terminology, so reporters then have to break it down to the understanding of the ordinary people. So in the absence of such, you find that uh, uh, it might have a delay or the information that will be disseminated 
might uh, really uh, not be as accurate as it should be. So this on its own is putting a strain on uh, the journalist as well covering as uh, uh, the, the, the issue of COVID-19. And again, the, the, the issues around the, the logistics, the matters of connectivity, um, they will hamper how the work is done. In the media space, you work with deadlines. A story breaks up um, uh, in the morning, uh, an hour is, is is late for that to 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 be on air. So we are going to see that the turnaround times are not going to be as fast as they are universally supposed to. And uh, th with the connectivity, again, as I say, that uh, with a province like KZN, for instance, where we have 11 districts and um, almost two thirds of them are deeply rural. So we still have issues with uh, uh, the connection and the issue of a uh, network being not reliable. So having someone out in the field having to file back to the newsrooms in Marysburg or in Devon, it's not going to be uh, the same. So in that, that way, um, a competition might be unhealthy. And then the issue of load shedding, it's back again, it's a double blow where people are faced with lockdown, it is going to impact again. Uh, how long can you sustain feeding live broadcasts when you have um, a load shedding that sometimes does not go according to the times that were indicated? And again, the issue of diversification, um, we, we, we know that till recently, um, broadcast journalism was now in this country and many others in our region, um, in southern uh, part of our, our continent. Um, you'd find that when you miss the story uh, from a news bulletin or a live uh, broadcast, you have hope that you will have catch up either on the podcast or uh, on uh, platforms like uh, YouTube. And uh, you even have uh, opinions uh, from people who wrote the story expressing it uh, through their blogs. So all that is going to uh, take a back seat at the time when it is needed the most. And again, uh, the biggest casualties again will be community um, um, community radio stations. Uh, we do know that uh, besides the support they get uh, from uh, the regulator and uh, government again, not all of them really are able to self-sustain. So um, when budgets are cut on advertising, uh, you will find that um, um, community media is going to suffer again because uh, there are no alternative revenue streams that are packaged for community media in general. This includes print as well. We are already seeing the challenge of physical centrality of newsroom. It is disrupted. Um, the chain in news production is uh, you will get a source who will give you a story or a journalist out in the field will send the recording. There is a process uh, with the hierarchy and the organogram that is involved before it finds itself on air. You still have someone who will edit, uh, someone who must proofread, someone to make sure that uh, we, we guard against litigation. So with people working from home, then uh, it's a question of taking uh, the, 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 the information as presented to yourself, process it, and some stages will be skipped uh, because there aren't enough people to do that and edit accordingly. And then the issue of auditorial independence. Uh, for years, not only in this country, journalism has always been uh, under threat uh, when the media owners have uh, to weigh in the weight of uh, um, editorial independence uh, versus uh, retaining advertisers. A point in question, for instance, would be if there is a company that uh, supplies um, uh, 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 PPEs, and uh, advertising in that particular uh, medium and uh, a journalist then discovers through the sources that uh, the company is uh, not doing things according to the regulations or there is a matter of maladministration or corruption. That is a good story that can stand on its own. But now you have the same um, advertisers complaining to the broadcaster saying, well, if uh, you run with that story, I have the power to pull out my advertising from you and go to your competitor. So in times like this, journalism is going to really face a strain where profits are uh, going to be prioritized to save jobs and to save uh, companies again. Now, television uh, journalism. 
information overload already um, is <laughs> getting through people's uh, social media pages uh, on the program that I host. On Monday, we have a segment where we take people's calls about uh, everything and anything they want to talk about on the open line. It does appear that uh, with four months into lockdown, it's become a, co co a coverage overkill. Uh, so you really have to be creative in how you put together your piece. Uh, so that you do not have um, uh, 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 your audience uh, running away from you because uh, all they hear about is depressing news. And then sports has suffered a major blow again because uh, a lot of TV uh, broadcast revenue is uh, into sport. Uh, now with live games uh, being suspended, then the, the sports journalists um, are facing difficulty as to how to find content that will be relevant um, uh, when you do not have uh, TV games. We've seen some trying to uh, go back to the archives, playing those moments, but again, how long can you keep it on air? And then news fatigue. Again, we've been warned every week. Uh, if you look at the, the, the psychology uh, gen, journal that is released, we are told about the adverse impact of uh, uh, bad news uh, on, 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 on our um, um, listeners and consumers of information. So again, people are going to have news fatigue. Um, you are advised not to listen to the news and to follow what is going on because it's depressing. And uh, the news might be about someone in your family. It could be uh, uh, in your ward, uh, people close to you. And uh, with that fear, you may find yourself uh, not wanting to be informed. And again, that's listeners uh, lost again. The issue of poor visual and audio quality. We are seeing that uh, um, television channels are now depending on um, on, um, on, 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 on content that is uh, supplied by the viewers themselves and uh, quality will of course be challenged because you do not have a professional videographer out in the field and um, as they source uh, 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 content from the users as well you find that uh, there are poor visuals and the quality is compromised. It's something that is going to stay with us for a while because uh, it's 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 been encouraged that people must uh, send uh, their stuff. But again, uh, will the audiences uh, understand and adapt that this is the new way of us consuming this product called uh, news? Again, there is pressure to tweak the pre-produced commercials. And um, you, you, you'd you recall that uh, unlike any other medium, earlier on I mentioned that radio news is an easier form of uh, producing information uh, because you, all you need is what, a microphone, headphones, and uh, you have a journalist out in the field, but with TV, especially when uh, commercials are produced, it might take what, for up to two months uh, trying to put um, um, a television commercial together. But now with the COVID-19 protocols where people have to be seen social distancing and having masks, you'll find that uh, uh, stuff that was already uh, produced and ready for broadcast will have to be tweaked so that it is relevant um, and, and, and reflect the current times uh, presented by this um, a pandemic. I know of one insurance company, for instance, that has um, a, a, a commercial that was recorded at a, a stadium, and then uh, you see there are disclaimers that run um, on the screen to say uh, we promote social distancing, and this advert was uh, recorded pre-COVID times. And then the live streams again. As a source of content and running short of uh, news, we are seeing uh, news channels now uh, taking the uh, live feeds from the government briefings um, almost every second week, if not every week. We have uh, um, um, government communicating uh, a, a, a per sector what uh, their stance is as uh, uh, the regulations are being enforced. And uh, so with that being the only source of news, we do see that it does affect uh, the way they plan their broadcast and uh, at times the uh, the briefings do not even start on time. So when you have a scheduled um, a briefing to take an hour from three to four only to find that they don't start on time, then it end up uh, disrupting your plans, especially when you do not have a backup a plan uh, when those briefings start. And again, in South Africa, being a country with uh, 11 languages, uh, uh, the three 
um, national news channels that we have, you'd find uh, that uh, um, the minister, for instance, will uh, do the uh, uh, presentation in English and halfway they change into a uh, Guni language. Now we have alienated uh, the other uh, viewers because they cannot understand and follow uh, the language. And uh, now you cannot also say you will be armed with the anchors who are um, multilingual. That is one of the challenges that as we um, get uh, to understand the situation we are in, plans will have to be made to make sure that you mitigate against um, losing your audiences. Now, working from home uh, is a buzzword uh, and uh, in every sector, every field. So uh, broadcasting could not be left behind. If you recall, the first company actually that started this is IBM. Um, I remember at the time that they, they, they justified allowing their staff to work from home by saying people become more productive when they work in a space they are comfortable in. And it did work for them uh, because the top end growth, it, 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 it recorded um, uh, 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 huge margins. But you recall that later on, about 10 years ago, they had to change their plans and they adopted a, a, a hybrid approach. So now from the producers and people who deliver who are delivering this content, somehow novelty will wear off. Um, how often, for instance, on radio uh, are you going to say I'm working from home and uh, we have had uh, uh, information or sound actually um, uh, that is not supposed to be leaking on air. And of course, you can say that, well, we are working from home, such is supposed to happen. Dogs barking in the background, a, a, a car sound driving, all, all that is happening for both television and radio. But uh, how long can you keep it? And again, uh, with the network and connectivity uh, being a, a, one of uh, the biggest challenges, the kind of quality that you will get will depend on the location. Uh, so when you have a, a team of three people uh, working together and but they're not in the same space, then you will find that um, um, it will impact on creativity as well because uh, the priority is to have a live broadcast confirmed, but all the other creative uh, uh, juices that add in, in content uh, uh, generation and delivery will, will be impacted. Again, time spent uh, listening and time spent watching uh, that collaborative chemistry. I did mention again that uh, in uh, producing a, a, a content or a messaging on behalf of your clients that um, is not only available on your traditional platforms, uh, you will have uh, teams, uh, for instance, that would have ensured that it has legs to stand on other medium um, affected again. Uh, so you'd end up, instead of going forward with innovation, we're going to um, stay with what we know, the tried and tested. And then the threats to verbal reality. Uh, I'll make an example, for instance, in a show, a news program, for instance, that is presented by uh, three individuals. You already know that uh, you'd have the main anchor who will uh, uh, do the time checks, uh, uh, drive interviews, and uh, you have a support person who will have comments. Uh, all these people have characters that they play. So as someone who listens to the show or someone who consumes uh, uh, that uh, program, you know that this individual has love for sports. But with people not being in one space, you're likely uh, to um, uh, be here. Uh, something that um, was not what you were familiar with. Uh, this guy is known as a sports fanatic. Um, he has not mentioned anything about being a family person. But again, as you get to understand them better when they work from home, you then discover things uh, you did not know about them. And uh, then in a way, uh, the credibility and the relationship that you have uh, with uh, 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 your idols somehow is going to change for better or maybe you will have disappointment. Homeschooling again. Remember when you work from home in any sector, uh, there is homeschooling that people have to take care of. So um, it might clash or present clashing of times and uh, that again will impact on uh, 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 how these people deliver the content as expected. And uh, again, the issue of innovation uh, or multi-platforms, it has to be suspended again and uh, that will have a knock-on effect on spend. Let's look at the global trends as per the last three months. Um, global advertising revenue um, has gone down. We saw this even before lockdown. I suppose um, um, at the end of uh, three months again, the figure will change 
4.4%. Uh, that's a global ad revenue. So that it's gone down by 4.4. That was before lockdown. And then uh, uh, TV and newspaper, their ad revenue. Um, I think the, the 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 biggest casualties in all forms of media has been TV and newspaper already a 15% down. And uh, uh, digital advertising slightly up 3.5%, and uh, that is to be expected. But again, you cannot have a, a digital and live streaming as the only um, a source. Um, um, as you uh, 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 as we deal with COVID-19. We have already seen that some broadcasters we started much earlier uh, uh, prior to the issue of a uh, pandemic uh, to have uh, uh, content that lives on uh, digital uh, platforms. Now, let's look at what is going to be um, the, the, the future of uh, this industry. Good news though, uh, much as uh, we are talking about unprecedented challenges, uh, Netflix reported that uh, they have doubled their targets. Uh, remember they had said uh, they, they, their targets was what, 7 million subscribers, but they have what, 15.5. So that's a huge growth on their part. And the uh, news channel at the start of COVID-19, they all reported that uh, an average of 29% in audience growth. That was around March, but again, as I said, uh, the issue of the health effects, the audiences have gone down again. So uh, as people were so nervous and there was this interest about this new pandemic, and then uh, now it's, 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 it's gone down again. And then secondly, focus attention on human capital. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a positive point to mention there, that when we talk about issues of safety, so now um, people who do the work and produce in all sectors, they have become a priority. Now, uh, broad broadcasters too um, have shown that uh, the, the emphasis and the priority is making sure that we have a, 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 a staff that is safe. And again, we've seen people appreciating each other's roles. You would know the ego that comes with this industry. So everyone <laughs> is important in this case, from the guy who will work, welcome uh, the big personality walking through uh, the, 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 the corridors of uh, the studios, be it TV and radio. Now you get to appreciate all those people and uh, it is in your interest too to make sure that they are safe because of um, uh, 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 how this uh, uh, pandemic uh, uh, virus spreads. And then audiences, uh, as people who consume um, the content, now they are learning to appreciate the role of the media because that's where they depend on getting the information. And uh, again, the content scheduling has become an option again that uh, you will pre-package. Some are doing it, the uh, pre-package content that will be scheduled um, to make sure that um, uh, they comply and adhere to the safety protocols. So the API, um, is now uh, being made a uh, standard when you have application programming interface in order to ensure that uh, you have scheduled uh, broadcast at particular times. And the uh, psychological boost, uh, working from home again. Remember, uh, the broadcasting industry is a, a real-time industry. And um, when you are, um, when you have a feature that is supposed to play at uh, 1645, it has to be at 1645. When you have a, a news bulletin at top of the hour, it has to be there. So now, with people working from home, with an option of scheduling and pre-recording, somehow it has given them a relief from the pressures of uh, the job. And then at the early birds, we saw that uh, at the start of the year, already there, there, there were broadcasters in both uh, radio and television who were already um, um, getting revenue uh, from their digital platforms. So it's given um, advertisers um, a good opportunity again to look at uh, alternative um, um, revenue platforms or rather advertising uh, platforms. But now um, if you by this time do not have um, um, sizable audiences on, on these platforms, uh, it might be too late for you to justify uh, selling your content. But those who have already uh, been there there are perfect uh, case studies um, that will assist them in uh, uh, motivating for this uh, stream uh, for generating revenue. Then the broadcasting sector given power as a constitutional instrument. Um, we are aware that in this country constitutionally, the uh, public sector financial year ends uh, in June. So as a part of uh, the, 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 the provisions and the demands of uh, the Municipal Finance Management Act, as well as the PFMA, 
by the end of, particularly with local government, uh, before the budget can be adopted, uh, there needs to have been a consultative process to ensure that uh, there was enough public participation. So now with Izimbizo and public gatherings suspended, how then do you pass a budget because government needs to run? We've seen them turning to uh, this uh, sector then to ensure that they use this as a platform for the accounting officers and the executive authority to engage with the people to hold them accountable as a way. So going forward, then this sector is going to be given a boost from the public sector as it will become a reliable uh, constitutional instrument. Post pandemic realities and future. Uh, legal threats posed by citizen journalism as uh, we as broadcasters will be um, thirsty for um, content that will come from ordinary people. They run the risk then of uh, falling prey uh, uh, through the deep fakes. We've already seen that uh, um, uh, stuff that will circulate and go viral only to find that it was uh, from a parody account or it's fake news and uh, deep fakes and we've seen some broadcasters again uh, uh, becoming victims of that so uh, with the appetite to break the news first we're likely to see this happening and uh, the news channels again webforce advanced tools what are you going to do are uh, they going to um, uh, cut down on uh, the number of staff or they will invest in getting advanced tools to ensure that uh, they are on air. And then government and agencies, uh, we have already seen an indication, some agencies proposing that they will have their own, their in-house uh, 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 production uh, uh, that will make sure that they produce their content and sell it as it is. And then syndication could be an option again. We're seeing it in Ireland where uh, private media, for instance, are able to have shared content um, as, as part of collaboration. That could be a solution. And then the rise in demand for exclusive uh, content. So when you lay off people, uh, people who are well trained, uh, they, that gives them an opportunity again uh, to uh, uh, start their uh, businesses because they have the know-how and uh, they will sell it uh, to, 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 to the uh, uh, former employers as well. All right, um, that's the end of uh, the session. Uh, basically, what I was doing, I was sharing um, the observation and the experiences, but again, from what we've seen on month four of lockdown, at least in this country, what are the positives uh, that we can uh, um, observe and glean insights as we look into how the future of broadcasting will be? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, um, Alex and Tiane. Uh, I think you, you've opened our eyes in understanding what happens uh, behind the scenes as some of us are consumers um, of, of, of the broadcast material. Um, I think we will take just one question as we have um, run just a little bit out of time. Um, do you think journalists create stories of COVID-19 infection just to create content and generate revenue? I think that has also had some ethical um, underpinning to say, are these stories created uh, just to create the hype and again, um, alert and, and, and put an alarm to, to, to the situation that is already uh, at the pandemic level. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, the issue of, of ethics, uh, you'd recall that uh, um, in, in, in journalism, you uh, one of the fundamental principles is to be fair and impartial. So you verify the information. I spoke earlier about uh, the chain in the organogram of putting together a new story. So definitely, um, if you do that, uh, then you run the risk, one, of having your uh, uh, consumers not taking you as a credible source. And then secondly, when you are forced to retract, it does knock a credibility um, on your part as well. Once you apologize for running a, 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 a story that is not factual or something that you manufactured, and then um, it, 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 it goes against the principles of the field. Thank you very much. Um, that brings us to the end uh, of today's lecture. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mtiane. Um, next week, uh, same time, um, same place, we will be having another virtual lecture as we do every Friday. Thank you very much. Bye.